Hey everyone, guess what? There is new Xbox Series X news this morning coming straight from Microsoft. Let's take a look at what they've announced. There's basically three sort of pillars of information that they're doing a bit deeper of a dive on. Uh, we wrote the story here at CNET, so let's check out what we exactly have going on. So if you were super curious about what is going on uh, under the hood in this Xbox Series X, it's right here. Uh, you're looking at eight cores running at 3.8 gigahertz, uh, all the way down to RAM. And what I find the most sort of interesting, this area right here, the uh, internal storage situation. We're looking at what is likely a full terabyte on board of SSD and expandable storage up to, uh, what is that, another terabyte. So you're looking at two terabytes total. And it got me thinking, is this enough for these next generation games. I mean, games can already get to 75, 100 gigabytes and more. Um, if we're looking at a net total of two terabytes, are we still gonna have to be juggling with, uh, you know, sort of managing that kind of storage? I don't know, but it's entirely possible. Uh, anyway, let's keep looking at what the story is saying. So obviously specs are a big deal, but also what Microsoft is touting is this new sort of Xbox velocity architecture, which is kind of this interesting idea. It's tough to really put into words, and I and I feel like through the dissemination of information that Microsoft's been doing, they've sort of had a difficult time kind of conveying that. But well, from what I'm reading from them with, with what the CNET reporting has told us, it's basically an interesting way that gives developers access to tons of amount of data at once. So what they're calling it is the Xbox Velocity Architecture that says they could give developers up to 100 gigs of game assets instantaneously, which I know on paper doesn't feel like a lot, but to me that just sounds like a, a really impressive amount of stuff that developers will have at their disposal in terms of what they can stream into the game and uh, having that kind of bandwidth. Of course, you like to see something like that. It's a bullet point that they're using in this story. So here you have it. And then Microsoft spent a little bit of time talking about the new Xbox controller. And uh, again, it's a lot of stuff on paper, but they have streamlined what they say the uh, process that inputs get delivered from the controller to the console and working with uh, 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 variable refresh rates on monitors and, and how that information is going to be conceived and, and sort of processed and sent to the TV sounds like they're doing everything they can to combat input lag, which is obviously, you know, when you have a controller and you're playing a game and when, you know, you hit that A button, the information is not sent as quickly as you would have liked it, whether it be on the uh, uh, side of the hardware, like your television or uh, on the console itself. So Microsoft saying, hey, we know input lag is very much a thing. We're going to try to address it in, in a few sort of uh, details here. They also talk about an improved D-pad. Um, and, uh, you know, dedicated share buttons because that's a big problem on an Xbox One controller. You can't share stuff instantly in the way you can on a PS4. So obviously addressing that is a big deal. Um, and then finally, you know, you have some interesting things about the size of the Xbox Series X. And, you know, right here you have Microsoft uh, having a little bit of fun joking about you know, the fridge sort of thing that they uh, they dealt with when people were comparing the size of the uh, original Xbox Series X reveal that looked like a refrigerator. So they're having a little bit of fun. I respect that. That's cool. But uh, there you have it. That's going to do it. That's about all the news from uh, Microsoft this morning. Hope everyone is uh, being safe out there and doing what you can so that we can all get through this very weird time. Uh, I'm Jeff Bacalar. Follow me on Twitter if you like, at Jeff Bacalar. And uh, we can chat, keep the conversation going online. And of course, please let me know what you think in the comments section below. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.